Okay, with this video I'm going to show you how to make the template. Now, what do we need to make a template? We need a drawing, in this case Task P6 from the Sitting Guild 6035 book, Practical Task Manual, a ruler, a nice sharp pencil, folding ruler and an A3 sheet of paper. Better to have two rulers. Okay, so if we can see uh, on the Task P6 we've got three drawings there and we can use uh, a one template to do pass over A and pass over C. If we turn pass over C over, mirror image it, it will lay exactly on top of pass over A. Therefore we can use one drawing to bend two pipes, two different pass overs. Okay, do a little bit of magic here just to, to show you how it works. Okay, so we mirror image it over, flip it around, expand it up, and as we can see, we can now use this drawing to do our template. So we're using a 15mm copper pipe in this case. Um, the gap is 15mm. Okay, from the centre to the end on the left is 150, from the centre to the end on the right is 160. And the distance between the centre pipe to the centre of our bottom bends are 80. Okay, so what is a template? It is a drawing, and make sure your pencil sharp, as I said. Uh, the thinner the lines, the more accurate the, the drawing will be. And remember, um, if you look at the uh, task criteria, you only have three millimeter maximum tolerance. Okay, and this is the same for the whole uh, 6035 book. Okay, so that's why it's important to have a sharp pencil. Okay, so a template is a line drawing showing the center line of the pipe work. Okay, so when we're bending it, when we're drawing it, we're always working of center line of the pipe work. Okay, so what we're actually drawing is a center line drawing of the pictures on P6. Start off by drawing a line which will represent the top bend of our passover bend. Okay, then we've got to measure down 30 because we've got a 15 gap and we've got half a 15 and half a 15 to get to the center of each pipe, so that adds up to 30. Okay, so measure down 30, so we've got, we'll end up with two parallel lines 30 apart. Okay, the next line we need to draw is the center line, okay? And that'd be the highest point of our top bend. Okay, so 90 degrees to the lines we've just drawn in the middle of the page, draw a line all the way through. Okay, and then we can measure our end of our pipes, which is on the left 150, on the right 160. Okay, and just draw a little line on there, so when you lay your pipe on the paper, you can see the line uh, underneath your pipe work. All right, this helps to see if your pipe is accurate to the drawing because we're going to later on we're going to lay the pipe we're bending on there. So the next two measurements we need are for the second two bends on the bottom pipe which are 80-80. So we measure from the center line on the bottom line 80-80 and then draw the line through so it goes through our top bend joining up our bottom bends to our top bend. Okay, be really accurate with this. The more accurate the drawing is, uh, the more accurate the bending is going to be. If, you, if your drawing's rubbish, then your bending is going to be rubbish. Okay, so take your time. Nice sharp pencil. And make sure it get crosses exactly where you want it to be. Now we can measure from the end to the first bend. From the first bend to the second bend. Write the number on there, the measurement. And these two should be the same if your drawing's accurate, obviously, because they're the same, same angle. Okay, and then from the third bend to the end of the pipe on the right hand side. Add them all up, start from the left to the right, it's up to you. Write them all down, add them up. You must show all your working out, so even if you're doing it in your phone, in your head, wherever, you've got to write it down on the paper. Sitting guilds want to, to show everything that you've done to prove you haven't just copied it off somebody else. Okay, so in this case, it's 70, 85, 85, 80, which is 320, so the length of the pipe we need for this task is 320 millimeters. Okay, so that is task C, which you would have to put at the top. Okay, so now we've done our drawing, let's bend the pipe. So first thing we need to do is to um, cut our pipe. Yeah, so we measure the pipe um, and then we're going to cut it and using the angles and the measurements from the drawing. Remember, 
anything less than 90 we do not deal with gain but remember even the small bends on this drawing on th in this task will gain a little bit so this will gain three to four millimeters so if we start in the middle with the first bend the the middle bend and work our way outwards then any any of this small bits of gain will go to the end of the pipe and we just trim it off afterwards okay it doesn't matter really where you start but that way you've got more tolerance and you can just trim off a little bit off each end if you start from one end work to the other if you made a little bit of a mistake on the first bend then it could be too short okay this way um, you've got a little bit more tolerance to deal with so measure your pipe 320 cut your pipe now remember when you're dealing with doing bends in a bender you always need a straight bit of scrap pipe um, to, to find the angle using your angle ruler on your bender which we'll see in a minute so add up your first two because we're going to start with the second bend not the first bend from the left so that would be uh, 70 and 85 which is 155 mark that on the pipe now make a little mark where you measured from okay in this instance it doesn't really make a lot of difference because we're bending from the middle outwards anyway but on a complicated uh, bend later on you must always bend away from where you measured from so if you get in the habit of putting a little mark on your pipe if you put it down and pick it up again um, then you'll always bend it away from where you measured from uh, and then any gain will go in the direction you want it to okay because even though we're dealing with small amounts of gain it's still important that you keep control of the amount of gain and where it's going okay so once we've done that then we get the angle with our angled ruler for our first bend which is the top bend put our pipe in the bender doesn't matter where it is at the moment just put it in lock it off get it in a position just before bending so it's all locked off in the bender nice and tight with no actual bending taking place clean off any marks on the former so there's only your mark going to be on there stops confusion later on get your angled ruler your small bit of scrap pipe to represent the other angle where it will end up once you bent it okay put the angled ruler first down the center line of the pipe fixed in the bender and then adjust it up so it's going down and move the angle so it's exactly down the middle of both pipes and that will be your bending mark on your former okay so put a little mark, little mark where the rulers meet and when you're using these angled rulers always use the inside of the ruler not the outside it's more accurate okay so where the two rulers meet that is the actual bending mark on your bender so put a little mark on there take out your guide and a bit of scrap pipe move the marks up so that the marks are in line with each other the former and the one on the pipe put your guide back in and bend it to the angle on the on the ruler on your angle ruler okay take your time with this make sure it's accurate check it before you take it out that it's spot on by putting it down the center line of the pipe okay take it out uh, and then we can use our drawing just to do another check before we carry on just to make sure it's absolutely right you can do a visual check with your eyes just lay it on there a little bit above just check the angles okay that looks spot on now we're going to do th the next two bends so they're both the same from the center of our first bend 85 down okay so two rulers make sure that the mark and uh, as you can see the mark up where I bent my first bend is exactly in the middle of the center line so if that mark isn't don't worry about it still use the center lines okay this is where the tolerance comes in you're allowed three mil tolerance so always make sure don't use old marks always make sure we're lucky this time it is spot on it could be a millimeter or two millimeters out either way so always measure from the center okay so that's your 285 marks and we're going to bend them away from the first bend get the angle for your new angle for the bottom bends they're both the same so you need one angle one mark on the bender okay put your pipe in as before don't worry where the mark is at the moment lock it off because we've got to put the mark on the former okay make sure that the first bend is behind the lock off or the uh, crook, grip hook stop okay lock it all off with the guide in it clean off any uh, old marks that you've got in there 
uh, to stop any confusion. Alright, once you've cleaned off all those marks, um, then we can uh, get our angled ruler, a bit of scrap pipe. Make sure the scrap pipe's nice and straight, not bent one by the bent piece. Okay, again, make sure the out first of all the, the ruler's going down the, the pipe that's fixed in the bender, then adjust your angle, adjust the pipe up, take your time, make sure it's going exactly down the middle of both pipes, and then you can mark the point on where the rulers meet on the former. Okay, take the bit of scrap pipe out. Move your marks up, it's up there, the same. Okay, the, the mark on your pipe is the same as the mark on the former. put the guide back in. This time we've got to make sure before we do any other bends that the first bend uh, is parallel with the with the former. Okay, so we put a, a long ruler on the former and just check it between the pipe and the ruler that it's parallel. Otherwise we end up with it all all bent all over the place. Alright so check it. Long ruler on there, that's why you need a long ruler and a short ruler for these jobs. Check it that it's parallel between the ruler and the pipe before you do any further bends. Very important. Okay, so then we do our second bend, the new angle. Again, take your time, make sure it's down the center line. Turn it round. We have to move the mark around the other side of the pipe because we're bending it away from the first bend, put it on the same mark, same angle, so we don't have to do a new angle. Get it up in the air again, long ruler on the on the former. Make sure the pipe's in line, like that. Okay, so the gap between the pipe and the ruler. The third bend, same angle, take your time, hold it on the center line of the pipe, check it. Okay, and then we can use our drawing again to check it. So if we lay it on the template and we can put a ruler over the top and we can see our lines underneath where the lines go through and the lines should all follow through the pipes we bent if you've done it correctly. Okay, and it should be in line if you've made sure. Okay, so that's what, it, what it's for. It's for passing over another pipe like that. If we see it on the drawing, that's where the pipe is. And I'll make it a bit clearer put it down there. That's the pipe we're passing over and that's the 15 mil gap. Okay. Remember if if the gap if the gap's not marked on your drawing, you must have at least minimum the amount of pipe you're passing over. Okay, so using our template we've done, we can now measure it for the passover C. Okay? So the passover C's got a fitting where the first left hand bend is. Uh, just here where the arrow is there's a fitting, normally a T. Okay, so we've got to work out the X dimension for this fitting, and I've worked it out uh, X dimension for our uh, N feet is 10 mil. Uh, measure it yourself though, because they do vary. So we take 10 off the 85, makes 75. So then it'd be 75 plus 85 plus 80. So the length of pipe we need for pass over C will then be 240 millimeters, and we bend it exactly the same way, doing the middle bend first or the the, the top bend first, and then doing the other bend afterwards. In this case it doesn't really matter because you've only got two bends anyway. But if you've got more than two bends it's best to start in the middle. Okay, good luck with that.